Welcome to another edition of Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. Last time, you would have seen Rosie the Riveter decimate the opposition. Today, it's the welcome return of Tricerabot, who in its last showing did a good job of upsetting Matilda, who will definitely be looking for revenge today. And the return of Termite with a new improved design. Last time on Robot Wars, they got a good torchin. Today is another day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mick Foley. Yeah, thank you. Holy, holy. I love when you do that. Welcome to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. It's been a long and exciting road littered with broken dreams and robot limbs. Five robots have already clawed and scratched their way into the championship. One more will join them after tonight. Who will emerge from the fray? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's join Carol in the pits to get the four. One, one. Thanks, Nick. Hi, I'm Carol Grow, and Robot Wars has some of the best robots in the world. Six will fight today, but only one will go on to the grand finale. It is sheer metal madness. And I don't know who my money's on, but I do know one thing. It will be one hell of a fight. You're absolutely right, Carol. We're going to see Termite go up against King of Diamonds and Dragbot. But first up, we're going to see Discotech and Brawler take on Tricerabot, who's down in the pits with Carol. I'm here with Tricerabot 3.0. Well, your first round, you're going to be against Discotech and Brawler. Yeah, actually, right now, I've got Ron uh, readjusting our weapons configuration to deal with those robots. Uh, we're looking to puncture some tires, to puncture some armor. We've got titanium spikes here to deal with the tires. We've got a grave digger here that will allow us to uh, avoid the ramp, any ramp that anybody has. Oh, uh, one challenge that we're going to see is all these robots in this match are going to be invertible. We can all operate equally well inverted, so it's not going to be real easy to just tip somebody over, which we could do with our tail that we've now added, which is new since last season. Disc-O-Tech, correct? Right, not Disco-Tech, Disc-O-Tech. Tell me about your machine. Well, we've got a four-wheel drive machine here with four wheelchair motors, each one delivering a, a horse and a half. So we've got six horsepower driving it. We've got a, uh, an NPC X950 uh, motor from Briggs & Stratton here at 15 horsepower driving this... Uh, Controls your weapon. Right, drives the weapon. What's it made out of? It's made out of a disc brake rotor off a motorcycle. And how fast does it go? Uh, 1,500 RPM. Pretty fast. Very fast. We wish you the best of luck. Have fun. Thank you, Carol. Last but not least, we're at the Brawler. Tell me about this great robot. Well, it was designed to be compact and reliable. You look uh, like you have a pretty fierce weapon. Yes, it's a tool steel, S7 tool steel weapon, uh, hardened to about our C58, and it should do a lot of damage. We can uh, turn 360 degrees either direction at about 200 RPM. <laughs> and the slice and dice them with the front end and hammer them in the ground for the back end. There is a hammer on there the back end. There is a end. hammer on the back end, yes. But Teddy's hiding it a yeah, little. Teddy is right now. Teddy's right hiding now. it. His name is Max. From Chino, California, Brawler. The Brawler at over 200 pounds is a double-ended spinner with a 10-pound hammer at one end and a spear axe at the other. Real low profile. From Corvallis, Oregon, Triceraby. There's Tricerabot, the return of Tricerabot. New and improved with a pneumatic flipper that can lift over 700 pounds. And he's got battering rams and a big, mean spike. From Minnetrista, Minnesota, Disco Tech. Last but not least, Disco Tech with a forged spinning disc in the front that'll get up to 70 miles an hour for a weapon. It's four wheel drive and invertible. Robotier, stand by. There's a Triceratops team with Mike Morrow with the controls, Nicole Morrow and Ron Ender up in the booth. And there's the Disco Tech team on the left and the Brawler team on the right. And there's Disco Tech with Norm Domholder, the controls. 
and Errol Miller at the controls for Brawler. And the house bots guarding the corner patrol zones in this round will be the Saw of Dead Metal. And joining Dead Metal, the Diamond Edge Axe of Shunt. Three, two, one. And as Rapbot backs out of the way, there's definitely a David and Goliath and Goliath here in this round. And the David is the brawler who seems to be holding his own out in the middle of the arena. It's a great spinning device if he can contact any uh, vital part on his opposition. Disco Tech is just sizing up how he can get in there. And Tricerabot is just circling around. And now Disco Tech is right into the side of Brawler and backs off. That spinning disc doesn't really seem to be doing very much good for the Disco Tech boys. But Disco Tech hits the Disc of Doom trigger. That's the spinning disc in the middle of the arena. Now Tricerobot is having a little go right after Disco Tech. And Disco Tech smartly gets out of it. That Disc of Doom has got teeth on it. As it spins around, it would definitely put the hurt on any low-profile bot out there today. Now Tricerobot gets underneath Disco Tech. Tricerobot definitely with all the power in this round. But the little brawler is holding its own, and there's smoke coming out. It doesn't look like Disco Tech has got much more left with all that smoke. Great one-wheel stand. Well, he's still got the power. I don't know what was smoking on him. And Tricerobot just charges into the pit trigger, opening up the pit. A great bit of strategy from a real Robot Wars veteran. Tricerobot's got it all here. A lot of power. Let's see if they can put Disco Tech or Brawler in the hole. Now, it looks, this is incredible. Everybody's in it to win it here. Nobody's given up as Dead Metal comes out of that corner patrol zone, tries to bury the saw down. Tricerobot is fighting it out with Disco Tech, and Shot pulls the ax down. What a great battle! Well, Disco Tech is gonna keep on motoring because he's got 24 volt motors on each wheel. So even if a couple of them, oh, he's close to the pit! And he puts himself in it! Oh, what a shame! As the Tricerobot boys know they've gone through, Disco Tech put himself away. Look at that, hovering over the edge but it was just too much for them to bear, and they just dumped themselves in it. Uh, Triceratops almost went right in after them. All right, thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, talk about a, what a way to start the show. One of the greatest bouts we've ever seen here on Robot Wars. In my opinion, all three of these teams should have been able to move on, but that's not the way the tournament goes. And so two of them will go on, and unfortunately, Disco Tech will not. But I think we need a, a big round of applause for all the Roboteers. Yeah. Guys, I gotta tell you, that was one of the most exciting bouts I've ever seen. And really, I meant it when I said that all three of you guys, I wish could continue, but that's not the way the rules go. And uh, unfortunately, especially because there's a little guy here, I hate to say it, but you guys are not advanced. So you gotta be, you gotta be crushed. Yeah. Definitely, that's all you want to say? <laughs> Not that it was a worthwhile experience and that it was a great contest? Well, it was only one battle, so there's not much to say. So Disco Tech is out of it. Next up, Termite, Dragbot, and King of Diamonds. Yeah, the arena is still reeling from the effects of that one. Disco Tech puts an end to the destruction by falling into the pit. Tricerobot and Brawler advance to round two. More sparks fly and more bots get bashed when we return. Whoa, all righty then. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. A fantastic battle has already claimed one victim. Let's go to the battle board and get our next matchup. All right, Mick, after seeing Tricerobot and Brawler go through, now it's time to see Termite, Dragbot, and the King of Diamonds. I'm down in the pits with Team Critter, 
They're robots called termite. Why don't you tell me a little bit about termite? Well, termite's a pretty mean uh, little bot. It's compact, as you can see. It's real strong. It's made out of half-inch plate aluminum. The uh, weapon up front is a spinning drum made out of a uh, 50-pitch chain sprocket. And then we have our, uh, what we call our hair, which is made out of uh, thatchers for uh, farm equipment. They will take a lot of damage and hopefully keep a bot on top of us so we can drive them around and dump them off over at the house spots or keep them away from our tires in the back okay. and in the, the side. Well, we wish you luck and hope you uh, do well in the competition. Thank you very much. On the fact that this is called Dragbot, but I'm not so clear on the team name. Can you kind of explain it for me? Yes, uh, the team name is Anna Zero, which basically is Arizona spelled backwards. We just thought it was simple and we're from Arizona. You guys are from Arizona, you decided just to turn it around. Correct. Okay, well tell me about this machine. Uh, this is Dragbot. It's our first attempt at a robot for uh, Robot Wars. Great. Uh, it's a very simple design, low budget. Uh, explain the weapon. Okay, what we have here is two sets of rotating blades. The idea being when we ram somebody, that these blades will take them off the back of the robot, either flinging them or doing damage to the wheels. So kind of a ricochet action to the back. Yes, we have a spinning disc that uh, runs approximately 2,200 RPM for defense. We have finally reached the King of Diamonds. Tell me about this impressive machine. Uh, we've spent about eight weeks working on it, and um, it's made of uh, aluminum, quarter-inch uh, aircraft grade. It has a 37-pound weapon on the front. It spins about 100 miles per hour. Well, with the aircraft grade, it should be pretty durable. Yeah, we hope it's durable, yes. That's the plan. Interesting. And you have a weapon on the back as well? Uh, we have a defensive weapon on the back. We have a scoop as well as spikes on the back that will self-ride us if we get flipped over. Wicked. From Omaha, Nebraska, the termite. There's the new improved termite at 165 pounds. It's got a rotating drum made of cutting blades for a weapon. And just look at the camber on those wheels. From Glendale, Arizona, Drag Bot. And Drag Bot in a 220 pounds looks like a double A fueler. It's got rotating deck blades on the top and a mounted spear and a spinning rear blade as well. From Clearwater, Florida, King of Diamonds. King of Diamonds into 204 pounds has got a spinning hammer that boasts 2,000 RPM. A steel weapon, steel spikes, maybe they got an ace up their sleeve. There's a King of Diamonds team on the left with Dean Dubois at the controls and the Termite team with David Gilson at the controls. And there he is, King of Diamonds and Termite, ready to go. And there's Team Dragbot with Lance Greathouse at the controls. Look at that bot. The house bots in the corner patrol zones in this round will be Matilda and joining Matilda, Shunt. Three, two, one. And here we go as Refbot backs out of the way. Termite takes an immediate move towards Dragbot. Let's see if that spinning drum on the front of uh, Termite can do any damage. Look at the size of Dragbot next to King of Diamonds. King of Diamonds immediately in evasive action. We haven't seen it spinning, but Dragbot's burning. Termite comes back out to the center of the arena again just to test where Dragbot's at. Dragbot's got a lot of clearance to move around that bot. And here we go, the first spinning action of King of Diamonds. Yeah, that did do some damage. You get in the way of that. And Dragbot's trying to emulate a little bit of it. So that King of Diamonds might be the real sleeper here in this round. And Dragbot got him sleeping. He just pulled off one of the protective plates from King of Diamonds. King of Diamonds is just sitting there right by the grinder, and Dragbot just takes a good run on him, but that wedge shape only brought King of Diamonds up about four inches. Now, that spinning blade on King of Diamonds, we haven't seen any contact yet with another bot, but I reckon it can do some major damage if he connects with it. Look at that spinning around motion. He's definitely got the speed. He may not have the weight on the other bots in this round, although Termite is a bit lighter. Dragbot is just large and cumbersome. 
And the termite boys are trying to figure out how to get their bot rolling again. They may be immobilized. And as you know, only two can go through in this round. And one is going to hit it. King of Diamonds seems to be stuck right up against the rails. Could they be out before Termite? This would be a surprise. Termite's not moving very far. They definitely have some drive problems. And shot hits the pin trigger. Wow. I know that's not strictly with the rules. And I think uh, you're not going to argue with Shunt, that's for sure. But he was supposed to stay in that corner patrol zone, and nobody was driving any bots into his corner. So I think Shunt puts away the king of diamonds, dealing from the bottom of the deck. Shunt completely out of line there, coming out of its corner patrol zone, hitting the pit trigger. That just isn't done in Robot Wars, which means that all three robots are still mobile, and this is going to have to go down to a judge's decision. And those judges will have to decide on control style damage and aggression to see who is going to survive this round. As you remember, only two can go through. So one of them is going to have to fall victim. And I wouldn't put any money on Termite because they were just kind of sitting around in the uh, outskirts of that arena. While King of Diamonds were really fighting it out with Dragbot. All you roboteers, hey, stop waving to the fans over there. All you guys, before anybody gets mad, before anybody gets mad, remember our, our judges are very wise and very learned. So their decision to kick the termite out of here, uh, you know, they felt that even though the King of Diamonds uh, went into the pit, they felt the termite wasn't moving around much. He started out strong, kind of tapered off at the end there. I got a, you know, it's a controversial decision. How do you feel about it? Well, I wish I was going on, but I understand. We weren't moving around too much at the end, and uh, they were still moving around a little bit more than us, but still, they ended up in the pit at the end. And I got to say, even though you're moving on, it's got to be psychologically <laughs> debilitating, devastating. What a blow to your ego to end up in the pit and still continue. Well, we feel like a phoenix. Uh, <laughs> rising from the ashes, we thought we were dead this round. Okay, so, well... I'm surprised as you are. All right, I'm, surp I'm surprised also, but now you guys. We are the I phoenix. Mean, you are the Phoenix, and may Phoenix. I say, there's something about you that's very handsome. Oh, I like you, too. <laughs> you look like me, that's what it is. <laughs> now, how do you feel, first off, about people confusing you for me, and, uh, and also about uh, uh, going on into the next round? Oh, I think it's just great. Uh, we came in here with a low budget, and we thought we would try to build a robot at a certain low budget and see if the little guy could get into it. And it worked. Yeah, we are. We're just surprised. And, and all that garage time worked. We just can't believe we... we we did so well, just unbelievable. Okay, well, we'll see how well you do in the next rounds, but for the time okay. being, enjoy the applause because you guys really did a great job. Everyone give it up for all of our Roboteers here. So after two rounds, Disco Tech and Termite bite the dust. Which means Tricerabot will face King of Diamonds and Brawler up against Dragbot. When Robot Wars Extreme Warriors returns, the action really heats up as the robots go face to face for a chance at the finals. All righty then, thank you. Whoa, that's very kind of you. Welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. It's round two and we're whittling four down to two for a chance to fight in the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors Championships. Let's go to the battle board to find out who's in our next matchup. All right, Mick, we're going to see Brawler up against Dragbot, but first up, the return of Tricerabot with King of Diamonds. We're here right outside the tunnel, ready for some second round action. I've got two teams, King of Diamonds, Tricerabot, King of Diamonds. Tell me what you're thinking right now. Well, we're a little nervous. The robot's been completely torn down. We had to replace the motor controller. Um, so we're not exactly sure what it's going to do when it gets in the ring. Well, that's tough. It seems like you got a gamble going on. Well, you know, if it works, then we hope to maybe, you know, disrupt their frame a little bit. Okay. Tricerobot. Well, I think, uh, as they probably know, we had some serious structural damage in the last fight. So uh, we spent a lot of time working on that. Uh, but uh, I think we'll, we'll hold together. She'll do you hold. think your repairs are, are successful then? We'll find out in, in the ring. Uh, we're definitely uh, interested in that weapon uh, to see how powerful that is. It could tear us apart or we maybe we'll end up uh, stalling it and damaging them. Okay, well, let's get down to the action. I'm ready. Are you? Hi, I'm 
I'm Doug Haddon, and this is Dean DeVoice, my teammate, and we're with the King of Diamonds and Team Girder. This is our robot, and this is our weapon, which spins at 100 miles per hour, and will do some serious, serious damage. I'm Mike Moore of Team Juggerbot. With me is Ron and Nicole, and today we've brought Tricerabot 3.0. Powered by WCMS Motors, this thing has a pneumatic lifter that can flip robots, toss them out of the arena, into the pit, whatever it takes. Besides destroying things, we're on a quest for fire. Roboteers, stand by. And there's a King of Diamonds team with Dean Dubois, the controls, and Doug Haddon. And there's Tricerabot with Mike and Nicole Morrow and Ron Ender. And joining us in this round will be the Diamond Edge Axis shot. And the other corner patrol zone will be guarded by none other than Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, activate. So here we go for a place in today's final. Whoever wins this one's gonna go through. King of Diamonds gets a little spin, but Tricerabot flips the King of Diamonds, invertible though he is. King of Diamonds just is not going to get up to speed if Tricerobot's strategy is in order here. They definitely want to get in there before that thing gets up to speed or else it might tear Tricerobot a new horn. Tricerobot's got him on the lifting arm now and slams King of Diamonds right into the Disc of Doom trigger. That disc is going to get spinning around and definitely is going to tear up King of Diamonds if he goes over it. Tricerobot with that lifting arm, 700 pounds of power. See if he can get him up and out of the arena. Definitely having the dominant force here, Tricerobot. And it looks to me like King of Diamonds is hiding over in getting a little protection from Rathbot. And Tricerabot wisely goes into the pit trigger, which means somebody's going down. And unfortunately, King of Diamonds looks like the most likely recipient. Killalot is just hanging right on the edge of his corner patrol zone, wanting a little taste at Tricerabot. Seems like the King of Diamonds guys have a little trouble up in the booth where they're controlling. They've only got one direction going left on their motors, so something must have got jarred loose. He's got reverse, but he just doesn't have one wheel working, it seems to be. And Tricerabot's just gonna let him hang himself, it looks like. Oh, shot comes out from nowhere out the back door and buries that axe right into Tricerobot. King of Diamonds looks a little worse for wear. I don't think they're going to make it too much further through this round. Look at that. The lifting arm of Tricerobot gets right under King of Diamonds, and you know what's next, and so does the audience. See ya! Great bit of strategic driving by Tricerobot as King of Diamonds hits the deck. All right, it looks to me like the King of Diamonds didn't exactly shine out there, but Tricerobot had just enough left to put the King into the pit. King, uh, things were looking pretty good here. Your, your machine showed its agility, but in the end, it was just kind of outmaneuvered by Tricerobot, it looked like. I have to hand it to him. Uh, the King is dead. Long live the king. The king, the king is dead. He keeps making comebacks. So. All right. Tricerobot, uh, it looked to me like uh, maybe your weapons weren't all that effective and it turned into a battle of strategy and could it be your, uh, your driving that was the key factor in victory? Uh, that may be a lot of luck, actually. That, that, the, the king is a, is a solid brick, I think, of metal and there is no way we could penetrate it. So. Okay. Well, you got the king into the pit, right? Finally. All right, now you're, you're advancing to the final. Good luck to you, guys. You did a good job and I think everybody should give you a little round of applause. Go ahead and check in. Good job. So, King of Diamonds gets trumped as Tricerobot goes through. Next up, Brawler up against Strikebot. Well, unfortunately, you had some tough luck out there. You want to tell me about it? 
Well, I thought we were going pretty strong. We had a good chance, but uh, our antenna just snapped off the first time he flipped us. Oh, that was the beginning of the end. Well, after that, we didn't have much control over the robot, I'm afraid. Well, better luck next time. We enjoyed having you. Hope you come back. Thanks. Oh, the king is gone, but he's not forgotten. The king has been dethroned as Tricerobot moves into the finals. When we come back, the battle to determine Tricerobot's next opponent. Stay tuned. You're watching Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Tricerobot has destroyed everything in its path on its way to the finals. I have no idea why I'm squinting. Will anyone be able to stop it? Let's go to the battle board and find out who's up next. Go ahead, make my day. OK, Mick, I'm going to squint, too, and I can't see the battle board when I squint. Oh, there it is. Brawler and drag by. We're down in the pits. We're gearing up for an exciting second round. We have Dragbot going against the Brawler. Dragbot, tell me what your strategy is. Well, uh, Brawler's kind of a spinning robot, very well built, solid. Uh, I think we'll probably be looking at a strategy. We can ram him, get him over the back, send him flying like a kite, hopefully. So you want to wedge him under, ricochet him off. Right, and attack from the back. Okay. So that's our strategy. Sounds like you got a plan. What do you think about that? Well, he can try, but uh, we hammered the last opponent. We're going to try to hammer the drag bot right into one of the big house spots. that's going to crunch him up and throw him into the pit. Sounds like you're pretty confident. This is going to be an exciting one. Let's go. From Glendale, Arizona, Dragbot. From Chino, California, Brawler. Roboteers, stand by. And there's the Dragbot team with Lance Greathouse, Mark Bowden, and Matt Seifert. There's the Brawler team with Errol Miller, David Miller, and Linda Miller. And the house spots in this round, Sir Killalot at 616 pounds. And joining Killalot, the Diamond Edge Axis Shunt. Three, two, one, activate. Well, this is really a Davy and Goliath. Look at the size difference between these two bots. Definitely Dragbot has the size, but Brawler's got the agility. Definitely a lot more speed going on with Brawler as well. We'll see what kind of weaponry as Killalot comes out early from that corner patrol zone. Look at the size difference between those two bots, and little Brawler gets out of harm's way. And there's Dragbot having a little trouble with a disc of doom. Low clearance on that bot is not a good thing for that disc, or at least not for the bot. Now, Brawler is spinning right on the front wedge of Dragbot. And he slams him right into the Disc of Doom trigger as Shunt comes out with the axe. Well, he shouldn't have come out of there. Nobody got in his corner patrol zone as the disc gets on spinning and Brawler gets away. Oh, nice jump. Excellent. Well, if Dragbot can't have any weaponry, at least they'll be good at launching bots. Because if Brawler gets a good little run at it, he might get out into the audience. Dragbot's got a little company from behind. Better stay away from that disc. He's way too low to go over that thing. And the invertibleness of Brawler certainly seems to be the bot that is the best design in this bout. Dragbot is cumbersome. It's large. We haven't seen any decent weaponry in action. And it doesn't seem to be moving now. As Brawler goes for a good bit of tactics and hits the pit trigger. Now the question is, is Dragbot going to be able to fit in that hole? That thing is so huge. The audience knows they want to see some burial. It's just a question of who it's going to be. And I don't think it's going to be Brawler because Dragbot is looking. Oh, he's just found some power from somewhere. Some of his electrics must have got jarred loose and he wasn't getting any power. But now Killalot is going to make him pay. Killalot with those pincers from the jaws of life, creating the jaws of death, certainly for Dragbot. And as the 10 second clock goes down, I don't think these house bots are going to have time to put Dragbot completely out of commission. Oh, 
look at this. He's going to do it anyway. Kill a lot. Up and over. Gives Dragbot its last burnout. But I'll tell you, Dragbot is still in this thing because that clock was out before Kill a lot dropped him in the drink, which means this is going to go back down to a judge's decision again. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. Now, right from the start, Dragbot was very aggressive. But after a certain point, they had some drive problems, major control problems from up in the booth. They got started again, but it might have been too little too late. We'll see what the judges have to say. Okay, and a decision that's not likely to surprise many people. It is the team of Brawler going on to the final to face Tricerobot. And guys, I've seen a lot of matches here at Robot Wars, but yours was the most recent. Let's face it, <laughs> your, your guy didn't do a whole lot out there. What happened? Well, about a quarter of the way into it, we just lost control. I don't know if something shook loose or something on the radio, but from that point, we were history. Okay, but look on the bright side. At least you look like me. All right, now, Brawler, a rough one out there. Uh, some might have said it was ugly, but uh, you go on nonetheless to the finals against Tricerobot. How do you like your chances? Well, Tricerobot is an incredibly tough robot. We faced him before. We'll try to beat him up as much as we can, and hopefully we'll come away victorious again. That would be nice. Now, listen, uh, I think everybody owes you guys a nice round of applause. Not too much for these guys, but uh, be generous nonetheless. Right here on Robot Wars. Yeah. So as King of Diamonds and Dragbot hit the scrap heap, and then there were two. Tricerabot and Brawler for today's final. Oh, Brawler did a number on Dragbot, dragging him down and out of the competition. When we come back, the Brawler goes punch for punch against the mighty Tricerabot, who will emerge from the smoke and go on to the championship. Oh, well, thank you very much, and welcome back to Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. Rounds one and two are history, and so are four of the robots. Only two remain, only one can prevail. In a second, Tricerobot goes up against the brawler, but first, let's take a look at how we got here. All right, Mick, we had quite a botly crew to start out with. Termite, King of Diamonds, and Dragbot. And then, first off, we saw Discotech, Tricerobot, and the brawler. So right from the start, Disco Tech looked like the one to beat. With four-wheel drive power, he was doing one-wheel stands. But Tricerobot was going to make him feel some pain. Tricerobot had a major power in that lifting arm. And the brawler made its presence known as well. No matter how tiny it was compared to the rest of the bots, but Tricerobot was dominating. This was a great battle, this first one. Everybody was in it till the very end. But it was the death of Disco. I thought we were doing just fine, and there became this square hole in the floor, and I fell in. Man, frustrating. So with a frustrated Disco Tech out of it, we next saw the Termite, Dragbot, and the King of Diamonds. So King of Diamonds, dealing from the bottom of the deck, got up to major spinning speed. Not any of the other bots wanted to get near him while he was up there. But when he stopped, Dragbot came in with a long wedge. And Termite just seemed to stay out of the way for most of that round. Definitely not very effective. Now, that redesigned uh, Termite could have been better off digging tunnels, because in Robot Wars, they didn't do too well today. After a certain point, it seemed as if all these bots were running out of steam. And the house bots were getting hungry and impatient. Termite wasn't rolling too far, but Shunt just couldn't take it anymore. It legally came out of his corner patrol zone and buried the deck. But it went to a judge's decision, and Termite was out of there. In the end, we weren't in the pit, and we didn't burn this time. So as Termite went out, there was only four left to fight it out. And they were Brawler and Dragbite, but first we saw Tricerobot and King of Diamonds. King of Diamonds did its usual spinning best to stay away from the lifting arm of Tricerobot. But Tricerobot's driving ability was just 100%. 
from the beginning of that round. They were using their lifting arm, they were using their speed and agility, and certainly a bit of strategy to get most of those triggers going for the arena. First, it was the Disc of Doom trigger, and then they hit the pit trigger. And, of course, King of Diamonds obliged them by hitting the pit themselves. Looks like we went into the pit. Triceratops went prehistoric on us. So the King of Diamonds ran out of extra cards, and Brawler and Dragbot were up next. So then we had the classic Davy and Goliath opposition with Dragbot and Brawler. Brawler, another spinner, could have got up to speed and done some real damage on Dragbot, but Dragbot served as an amazing ramp, a high-speed ramp. But they certainly had their share of problems in this route as well. There, for a minute, they just didn't have any power going to those wheels. And promptly got his power going again, only to drive into the corner patrol zone, where Killalot and Shunt were going to make a quick mess of them. Killalot got him up and over the rail, but the clock had already counted down, and that went to a judge's decision, where the brawler prevailed. All that work down the drain. Yep, you win some, you lose some. Yep, start over, try again. Well, with King of Diamonds and Dragbot out, that brings us to the final. And this final is Tricerabot and the Brawler. After the break, Tricerabot and Brawler will be walking down this tunnel, getting ready to battle it out for a place in the grand finale. Keep watching Robot Wars Extreme Warriors on the new TNN. Oh, yeah, thank you. Welcome back to Robot Wars on the new TNN. Tricerabot and the Brawler have beaten their way to the finals. Now, are you with me? It's time to settle the score. And here we go, Mick, for the final. Tricerabot up against the Brawler. From Corvallis, Oregon, Tricerabot. From Chino, California, Brawler. So as Refbot scans over the arena for this final, we're having a look at the Brawler team with Errol Miller, David Miller, and Linda Miller. And there's the Tricerabot team with Mike Morrow, Nicole Morrow, and Ron Ender. The house spot in this final will be the Tusks of Matilda. And joining her, the Diamond Edge Jacks of Shunt. Three, two, one. Here we go for the final. This is make or break time for the Brawler and Tricerabot. Tricerabot with some supreme driving skills. And the brawler definitely needs to get in this one. Listen to those tires squealing off a of Tricerabot. That four-wheel drive is just positive traction. Tricerabot knows better to let brawler get a good run at him. Because if that thing gets spinning, you never know. He's got a tire puncture. Well, the brawler has got to do something here because it really feels like Tricerabot is going to be dominating all the way through here. They've got the size, the power, the driving skill. Not much in the weaponry, but look at that! Pulls him right up against the rail. Almost gets him out and over. The brawler better do something. And there it is. He's getting up the speed. Tricerabot's just kind of waiting for his moment to get in there. Tricerabot circling the brawler. The winner of this is going to go to the grand final, so these guys definitely know they got to win it to stay in it. The brawler gets into the corner patrol zone with Shunt and just gets out in the nick of time. Well, Shunt would have made him feel it as the invertible brawler gets flipped over by Tricerabot again. The disc of doom is spinning in the middle of that arena. 
and the brawler is just trying to stay out of trouble as best as possible. But Triceratops is relentless. Mike Morrow at the controls of Triceratops knows just what to do. As the poor brawler seems impaled on the front of Triceratops now. The brawler might have lost some power to the wheels, but no, he still got it. Triceratops using its weaponry and speed and driving ability to its maximum potential. As poor brawler has been on the run for most of this round, they've got to do something now as Triceratops backs into the pit trigger. It could be all over for the brawler team. Triceratops done magnificently through this round. The brawler still has a chance, but unfortunately for the brawler team, Triceratops is completely impenetrable. These guys, look at the rail around the side of the wheels. They can't get in anywhere. Can't get a puncture. Goodbye! Look at that driving skill. Triceratops just dumps the brawler in the hole. What a good piece of driving. They weren't ready for that. Certain weight disadvantage there, but who's going to be crying about it? Not the Triceratops team. Okay, now, Brawler, as we can see by the stitches, the scars, the bumps, the bruises, you guys are basically known for taking a licking and keep on ticking, and uh, indeed you did that. Uh, you were determined to fight it out until the end. Yes, absolutely. They're complete pros over here, uh, Triceratops Team Juggerbot. We're um, very happy to compete against him. They did a fabulous job, and we gave it our most. You thought this guy was that good? Yes, he's very good. <laughs> oh, actually, we were all back there saying, yeah, this guy is good. Yeah, I mean, you're a force to be reckoned with. Too much power on the part of the robot Triceratops, it seemed like, for the brawler, but also maybe your driving skills completely outclassed uh, the brawler. Well, you know, they were, they were all over the place. They were really hard to, to keep up with, and that robot is indestructible. It's just solid metal with no real places for us to get into and do any damage. And we flip them over, they keep driving, and flip them over, and they keep driving. It's, they have an amazing robot, and it was tough. So the only way to truly vanquish them was to open up the pit and send them down to their doom. The pit of oblivion is the only way to handle the situation. Any predictions for the final? Uh, it's going to be bloody. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> it's going to be bloody. I certainly hope so. Well, that's our episode for this time. But stay tuned next time as six more of the world's best robots Fight it out in an attempt to become the Robot Wars Extreme Warriors champion. Until next time, fight on. Next time on Robot Wars Extreme Warriors, we're going to see destructive criticism, lightning tracks, General Chomsalot, G Force, the Marauder, and Runaway. All right here on Robot Wars.